Good morning everyone, Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here. Welcome. Um, if you are new to my channel, this is a um, kind of a different video. I am going to walk through the process um, that I take to change out fabric and colors for a design. This isn't my normal because I, I don't believe I've ever done this before. Um, so I hope this works well and I hope it's educational for um, you guys watching. I am using the pattern I got from Fat Quarter Shop, Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnets, Quilter's Cottage. There is currently a stitch along going on. Now currently me being this is mid-February of 2019. This, this is a new pattern for her, and um, she's doing a stitch along. She's actually doing live um, YouTube videos, possibly. Yesterday I saw a live Instagram video that she's doing. I'm not quite sure how that works. I haven't actually watched them yet. I need to go do that. But she sent me this pattern, and I want to go ahead and get started with it, but I am not enamored of the colors used or the fabric. The fabric she uses is um, a 10 count and you would use four strands of DMC floss. I, I don't want to do that. You know me, I like things little and petite. And I do want to change up the colors a little bit. Now my inspiration piece is this here. This is the design that was a um, design from 1980, no 87, which I have had in my stash for years and years and years, have absolutely adored almost got rid of it several times because the colors were 1980s colors. Mint greens, peaches, pinks, blues, think along those lines. I decided to take it and punch up the colors a bit to bring them more into the, well, 21st century now, right? I know we're almost 20 years into the 21st century. <laughs> I should know that by now. <laughs> so anyway, this is my inspiration piece. I did have all of my color changes for this noted in the X-Stitch app, so I have pulled all of those here. What I plan on doing, though, is taking these colors and not only deciding which of these are going to get changed to these, but then changing these to over dyes because, because there are such big blocks of color in here, I think it will be much more interesting and have more depth if I use the over dyed flosses. And I have so many of them, why not? Now, the only question is going to be what to do with the fence, whether I keep it white or not. I absolutely adore the white picket fence. It goes with the style but that is totally going to depend on what fabric I choose. And I haven't gotten there yet. First I'm choosing the floss, and then I'll decide which fabric works best with these floss colors. Now, of course, this is on white. The other restriction I have is that I want this pattern to end up being about the same size as this, so they can be companion pieces hanging one above the other in the same size frame. And this frame is, hold on, so this is a 12 by 15 inch frame, so the opening is, of course, is 11 by 14, well, actually 10 and a half by 13 and 3 quarters is the opening. The finished piece itself, with the half inch border around it, is about seven and a quarter by nine and three quarters. So that's what I'm aiming for. I haven't, I haven't done the conversion yet for the stitch count and the fabric size yet. So that we will do um, further on down the line. But first, let's get working on colors. Get that out of the way. So this is what I pulled. Um, I already have one of the Victorian mottos out. I couldn't find the DMC floss 
So this is kind of an equivalent for that already. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve colors in here. And you can see she has the Aura Floss listed and the DMC. Aura Floss is what she uses. It's what um, Fat Quarter Shop sells. I, of course, am, am basing it on the DMs. Well, I'm not really basing it on anything other than the color picture, right? But I am, let's see, so how many colors did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I have one, two, three, whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13. So I have more than I need. You'll also notice that there is no white in here because the jewelry is still out on the white, kind of, sort of. I am going to probably pull some kind of white from my, um, from my over-dyed flosses so I have it to put on the fabric. All right, so the first question then becomes, what do we substitute and what do we keep? I really like the pink doors with the dark darker red heart on it and I'm pretty sure that I think will work perfectly <laughs> so a lot of this as you can see is just playing what works what doesn't I think that might actually work better and maybe this as the dark heart in the middle. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling out which of the DMC flosses I want to use and then I'll find the equivalent in the overdyed. Make sense? So one of the things I really don't like, okay, so the majority of the house is white. I do not know whether I'm going to keep that white or not. I really don't like this terracotta color though. So if I do have the house white, you know me and turquoise, which one of the turquoises would be make pretty? Well, if I leave, that would mean I would need to leave the change the windows to a different color. would be okay. I'm just processing. If I left the windows that color, I could do that. Bring my piece, my inspiration piece over here kind of look at that. I really like kind of this dark blue circle here. So I'm considering the possibility of making the, the terracotta part of the house a dark blue. Let me move these aside that I've already chosen. Get these out of the way. So, if I make this part of the house dark blue, leave the rest of the house white, and make this the window panes, that would work. I probably wouldn't do, I may still do a black roof. That may get changed, but we'll go with that for now. So the green is one color, the green in the trees in the background here. The only real green I have is this one, and that's more of an aqua green. I am probably, well, there's this lime green as well. And that's the color that you see in here that's very striking against that, that black. 
So I could possibly use that green. I wouldn't want to use it, you know, as one of the main colors. I think it would be too much. It could definitely be the fill in there. Maybe the little bushes along here. I'm looking to see. So then if it's the little bushes here, it would also be here and here, which could be fun. We're going to go with that. Probably not go with that. So I'm going to have to pull from my um, variegated flosses something for the green. Really don't like the red of that that alphabet. So that I'm going to definitely make one of the turquoises. I like the dark, the darker I think better than the brighter. Now, taking into consideration that, so this is probably the same red that's here and here, and then of course here and here. So all of that will change. As I'm going along, I will, of course, I'm, I'm still going to use the red in the heart. I probably will still have some kind of red or pink here. So as I'm going along, I will be deciding, do I want to keep that symbol, that color, or am I going to change it? The middle of all of these that are yellow, I may just use the bright green. Let's put that over there. And once I'm done kind of going through this, I'm going to pause the video and make a note of all of these before I pull the over dyed flosses out so I can see what I'm dealing with. I don't have anything gray or in those tones that would really work with that um, for the path. So I'll probably have to pull some kind of gray out of my over dyed flosses for that. All right, and then I'm going to have to see, okay, so that's the same gray here. We have white, we have a little bit of brown. That's probably the same as up there, as in the house and the chimneys. So you can see there's going to be a lot of fiddling as I go, which is actually what I did with this. I put in and ripped out and put it in and ripped out multiple times before I got, as I was changing, things that worked together. I substituted that here, does that work there? No, that doesn't work there, so we're gonna use something else there. So there is a lot of fiddling that goes on, and I'm okay with that. All right, so I am going to see, I don't have the purples noted any place, so I will probably incorporate the purples in the flowers and then see where those end up down here as well. So I'm going to pause you, get some notes down, and then I will be back. Okay, here I am back with my basic colors chosen. I've made copies of all the pages of the pattern so that I can take notes on them. I'm having second thoughts about the dark blue for this part of the house. What I would like is to find a variegated that kind of is a blend of these colors, you know, a, an over dyed that's kind of softly those colors instead of the dark blue. And then I'd have to see about the window panes, make a different decision because I don't think, I don't think that'll work for the window panes. But we're going to just start at the top and start working our way down the list with the different colors and see what we can find. So, if I disappear here, that's because I'm getting my rings off. So here's my blues, and I have to say, I think a lot of them are in um, projects somewhere. Actually, I don't want to start with blues. I want to start with reds. 
So hold that thought. Let me get to my red ring. Okay, so here's my reds, pinks, peaches. All right, so I am starting. The first two I wanna find equivalents for are these ones. Now, when I say equivalents, we're gonna be taking that with a grain of salt because I may or may not have an equivalent. So that's where, like, my starting point, and then I will be just working with what I have, basically, because, you know, oh, stitch from stash. Sorry, my, my big hanger with all my floss on it just fell on the floor. So these are definitely more corals. So I'm kind of looking down at that end. I might have to pull out another, the ones with my oranges, because I'm really not seeing anything here that's bright enough. Let's see. And you know, if I don't find anything that pleases my eye enough, I may just go with the DMC. There's no rules here that say I have to do one or the other. So this is my oranges to corals, and see that is just, I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but see, you can see when I hold them together, the difference in the colors, right? Much more orange than I care to go for this palette. And these are getting too pale. All right, let's go back here then. Hiding under here. So I don't really have anything. So I don't really have anything that. is bright enough to go with the other piece. And that's the main thing, right? That's my that's my inspiration. I want them to work together. Now, do they have to match exactly? No, no, they don't. a little bit too pinky though that's not bad I'm actually going to turn on my odd light I have my blinds closed today so far this morning it is 10 30 and so the sun's still coming in pretty brightly down there and it, it makes that area pretty warm so So this is what a lot of it is, just kind of going through what you have to see if you have anything that works. And maybe you will, and maybe you won't. And you can see, I don't care at all what company it is. That doesn't matter at all. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Now, before I do that, let me pull this, my original piece over. So you can see how much more muted these colors are than what I have here. So decision time, do I do that? Or do I just stick with the DMC? And I think in this case, I am just gonna stick with the DMC because none of these, none of these are working. All right, so I'm gonna go with those. So that's those first two, we're sticking with that. Then we have a pink here. Well, no, that's those, wait. So, okay, what I just decided was that one and that one. 
okay? The light red is the one that's the alphabet. And that's the one that I'm going to be using this one for. So let's get out my blues and see if we have an equivalent there. I have to say, I think, you know, a lot of my, a lot of my variegateds are in projects. So, we may or may not find something that works here. That should be in purple, I think. <laughs> kind of have them hanging in a kind of light to dark order, a loose light to dark order. Okay. Nothing here is going to work. That's probably the closest, but I think that's too variegated. That's more than I want for those letters. All right, I might need to delve into some projects to pull out some other blues. So, Hold that thought for that one, or we may just be sticking with that. Let's think about what I wanted for this. Now, again, none of my really light, none of my really light variegated blues are here. You know, I guess I'm getting more into grays. Think nice color for a house. That one, or maybe that one. That's a cottage garden threads. That's an Australian thread. I got that from Stitchy Box. A selection of those from for Christmas last year. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off of the ring. But again, this isn't going to work for the windows. So, still thinking, still thinking. Wish I knew what that was. It's from some project at some point. I bet you it's from my bell pull. The Jacobean bell pull that I showed you guys in the other video. And that's all that's left of it. Hmm. Probably not enough for that part of the house. Do you think? If I'm doing one thread, it is pretty similar to that though, isn't it? Hmm. I'm gonna pull that off just to see. Okay, so this is the letters. This is possibly the white of the, or the um, brown of the house. Still don't know about the windows. This is the doors and the pinks. I need to find a gray for the path and then greens. Let's do the greens next. I have the yellow. I'm going to stick with that bright yellow. Um, the chestnut is what this brown is, so that's that. Let's go for the greens next. So the light green and then the dark green, those two greens. So let me get my green ring. So first, actually, let me, let me look at that. So this, the yellow, which I'm going to use this for, that is also down in these places and the center of the flowers. So if I wanted to have a substitute for that, let's see if we have anything. What do you think? Not exact, it has some of the tones, the yellower tones, or that. 
That's closer. It doesn't have the variegation as much. I think I'm going to go with this one. All right, so that's that. Now, the two greens, a darker and a lighter green. And yeah, these are kind of slipping all over the place at this point. And as you can see, I have all kinds of different, 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 different green. I'm going to hold that one out because I like that tone and I think the brightness of it goes well with everything else here. I need to see if I have one that's a darker that will work with it. Oh, coastal seaweed. That might work for my house color. Okay, let me pull that one out. Hold that thought. You see how this works? <laughs> it's kind of scattered. All right. Back to the greens. This is the green that I used for the some of the big leaves in Harbor Haven. I really, really like it. So I think that's going to be my tree green. That will be, I can unbury it. That's this green here for the trees. Now, I don't like that. So we need a paler green. Yep, it's not too bad. And actually, I use this one in um, Harbor Haven as well. Do you see a trend here of greens that work well together? The question is, though, do they work well with the rest of the palette? Since it is a brighter palette, let's test that out. So here's what we have so far, although this is probably going to replace that. I'm going to have quite a mess to clean up here, aren't I? And actually, then, I could probably use this, maybe these. I can use one of these for the windows. Hopefully that will work together. All right, so then we have this green and this green. Do you think those are bright enough? So that's going to be, let me get the big picture. That's going to be here, the bushes and these bushes, the stems of the flowers, as well as pieces within the, within the quilts. Well, and this is what I do. I pull them out, and as I, if I, when I start stitching those pieces, if I don't like them, I can choose something else. Get them off of here. All right, there's the greens. Let's see how we're doing here. So the aqua, the 797, that is the house windows. Now, here's a conundrum. It's the house windows, but it's also large pieces of the quilt. And if I just have these for the windows, I think that's going to be too pale for the quilts. I'm going to have to look in my other projects. To find a brighter blue, brighter variegated blue, because these are all pretty muted. That's the only one that's bright. All right, so hold that thought too. Denim. In place of the denim, I'm going to use this purple. I have for the dark gray, I have the black. Okay, light gray. And actually, the black is the roof, so let me see what we have in, that we can replace black, and then the light gray is the path and the poles down below. So let me get that ring. 
That is the last ring hanging on my little hanger. All right. And I have a lot of grays. I got um, one of those special gray packets from um, Victorian Motto. Boy, but I really like that. Look at the pretty subtle variegation in that. That's another one of the, cot country, uh, the cottage garden threads from Australia. I think I'm going to use that for the path and the poles. Now I need to find a darker one to substitute for the gray. So I have wrought iron, black coffee, into the darkness. That's one of the ones from the Tis the Season set. That has too much variegation. Slate. I think we're getting too light now. Because this is the color for the roof. Slate seems appropriate for a roof, huh? So I just, I feel that, um... Okay, I'm back. I know it was just a second for you had a emergency car question call from my son, which is pretty funny because I know nothing about cars. <laughs> so I helped him as best as I could and said, wait until Mike gets home or call your father. All right, so I'm going to use one of these. I think I'm going to use slate for the roof because it has some pretty variegation in it. Okay. And then white. Now she says acru on here instead of the pure white. But like I said, the jury is still out on that one. This is my neutral. So if I have, oh, okay, here they are. I have my neutrals on a separate ring and that's what this is. So I was gonna look through what I have here as far as the pale neutrals are concerned to see what kind of options I have. And I don't know, oh, hmm, okay. So I have this from Weeks, that's whitewash. That might be appropriate for a fence and it does have some color to it. And whether you can see that it kind of has, goes into some beige, yellowish, creamy color, that might be good for the picket fence. That I think is too creamy. And then there's always um, vanilla pudding. This is one of the Tis the Season colors as well. So, I am going to pull both of those off as well so I have them when I start playing with fabric. All right, and I now have a complete mess up here with floss everywhere, but that is what happens <laughs> when you do this. All right, so I am going to take some more notes and then I'm going to go get my fabric and we will see what we find. Oh, and I have to do, actually, before I go, let me do my fabric count. So I'm going to the into the X-Stitch app. Oops, now I want tools. They do have a calculator in here. Okay, so the width is 99. The height is 140. I'm gonna start with a 36 count over two. Border width, we'll start with a half inch of fabric showing and then of course the two inches for the border. So two and a half, calculate. So that puts that puts the fabric size I need. Boy, this is small. Five and a half by seven and an eighth. So that's really small in 36. Let's change this to 32. 6.2 by 8.8. .8. So I could put this in an eight by 10 frame, have it kind of mounted the same. What did I say the finished piece of this was? I don't remember. So we will measure again. Now, of course, this is the fabric size. Let me do zero. 
And of course it's because she uses such big fabric on um come on. Did I confuse it? I'm going back and starting over. She uses such big fabric on her on her original piece. 99 by 140, right? 32 over 2, 0. All right, that is the, well, for heaven's sakes, if I put two and a half in there, oh, okay, that's better. So the zero then, 6.2 by eight and eight, and the finished, or the design size of this is, about six and a half by nine. Okay, so that's for 32 count. That would work better. I'm just gonna do this, yeah. All right, so we're gonna go with the 32 count. All right, so I am going to go and start playing with, um, I'm gonna go and get my fabric and um, we'll see what these colors look like on different fabric. I'll be right back. Okay, um, I went through some of my whips to find some of my other variegated flosses and have found some substitutions that I like. So instead of sticking with the DMCs for these two colors, I'm going with this. So this will be this. So it's a little bit darker, more mellow, I think, but I think it'll work. It still has some of the brights in it. And then even though this is way different, I like that with that. So that is the door with the center heart. Now that center heart color is also down here and down here. So hopefully those will work as well. So there's those. For the alphabet, I wanted to have something to, that would be a, an equivalent to that, and I found this other Victorian motto. Again, slightly different, but close enough that I'm happy with it. And then for the brown part of the cottage, instead of the coastal seaweed, I had this cottage blue from Gentle Arts. And it says cottage blue, so I have to use it, right? And I think this will still work for the windows. But if it doesn't, if it's too close, I'll just go with one of the whites for the windows. So, I am now going to gather these up. I'm actually going to take you downstairs to my wardrobe where all my fabric is. Because um, I don't feel like basically like toting it all up here and the light's really good down there. So, come with me downstairs. All right, gang, so here we are in the bedroom where my wardrobe is that I have my fabric stashed. Now what I've done, I have a huge pile of like the, the side that's 32 count and below. So I've gone through that and pulled out the 32 counts that I think will work the best. We're gonna work through this. I already have a favorite. I'm hoping the lights out. That actually might be a little bit glary. Hold on one second. I'm going to close the blinds over there. Diffused light is better. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so this is a silk weaver on top here, 32 count. Let's see. The color is Meadow Mist. Now, I mean, all these colors are going to be gorgeous on this. And of course, this is a favorite color of mine. But as you recall, the big question is, will the whites work? And I think they'll be a little bit too lost on this. So as much as I love that color, I don't think it's going to work. So we're gonna peel that one off. The next option is a 32 count Belfast in light sand. So those aren't bad. Again, 
I think this color might be a little bit too pale for the whites. So we're going to peel that one away. And I've already checked to make sure the size on the, all of these is fine, and they are. Most of these are paler neutrals, so I might be saying the same thing over and over again. This one, um, it does not have a sticker on it. Uh, I thought it said on it somewhere that it's 32 count. I might have to, oh no, here's the sticker, duh. So it is a 32 count natural blend sheet. So that is not a Zweigart, I don't think. It's a bit of a stiffer linen. Again, all the colors look fabulous on it. The question is the whites. And again, I think a little bit too pale. Of course, the, you know, the balance with this is will it coordinate with my inspiration piece, the other, the other design. And um, I may just have to understand that the colors may not, the background fabric isn't going to necessarily be the same. Obviously it's not. I'm looking at things other than white here. And that one's not bad. It actually looks like a stronger contrast on the camera than it is in real life. The fabric isn't quite as dark as you're seeing. But that's not bad. And of course, the other colors are gorgeous on it. So I'm going to set that one aside. This one does have a bit of a water spot issue going on here, but I'm not going to let that bother me. This is, um, it doesn't have a tag, but it is a 32 count. It does have some other markings on it, but um, you know, that's the beauty of linen. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. The next one is R&R &R Sheep Straw, 32 count. A little bit more color in this one. That one I like. I like that a lot. Do you like that? What's not to love? It's R&R, &R, right? So that is a good possibility. This next one, again, doesn't have, doesn't have any tag, doesn't have any markings. Oh, it does, 32. Um, so I have count this one. When there isn't a tag, I actually have gone through at some point and marked on all of my linens in the corner. I've done the count and I've marked on them what count they are for the most part. So looking at these off camera, like the sheep straw definitely has, both of these definitely have more yellow to them, more orange to them. I don't know that I want that because that is not going to work. I didn't bring that piece down. Let me go get that. Hold on one second. Okay, so here's my inspiration point piece. So you can see how much more yellow those colors are, right? So that's something I need to contemplate as well as I'm going through this. So this next one is, is more of a neutral. Um, you can see it's more beige than, than the orangey yellow that is in these two. Again, the whites will work fine against it. And again, what you're seeing, or what I can see on the camera that I assume is what you're seeing, is a bit darker than in real life. I think I could live with this better than those ones. But we're not done here. All right, so we're getting lighter again. This one actually has some kind of stain on it. I don't know where that came from. I actually don't remember if this is mine or this must be one, an old one of mine, so I don't know where that came from. It's a pretty pale. I think it works better with that overall. But again, will the white show? 
So it's this whole balancing act. And this bottom one is very, very yellow. It's gorgeous. I love the coloring on it. There is no tag on this one either. And actually there's no count on it. Um, I think this is one I got from CJ. One of the few that didn't have a tag because most of her did have tags. But this I, I, is definitely too yellow. Oops, there goes a floss. My inclination, quite frankly, is to go with this, the Silk Weaver, because it does blend with all the colors in there. But it's just that white. So then the next question is, do I still let the white stand? It's not like it's not going to show, it's just going to fade in a bit more. The other question is then, like this one, it's pretty much the colors that's in there, although, you know, stronger, more um, saturated. This, though, will be, yeah, it will be inside, if you will, the black and the white from the house. And the house is going to be, I'd be doing the house So that would be my house colors. I think I'm going to go for it. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear your opinion. Um, it probably isn't going to change my choice because <laughs> I, I think this is the one that will work the best. And this will be a gorgeous fabric to, to work on. This is actually one that I got at Keepsakes um, on our trip across the country this summer. Fall, October, I think, is when we took the RV across, and that's when we stopped at Keepsakes. So anyway, I hope you found that useful. I hope it wasn't too much rambling. There was some, I know, dead spots where I was pondering. I may cut those out. But I hope you found this useful and educational. And just to give you a glimpse, and if, if you aren't somebody who easily changes your colors or your fabrics, I hope this gives you an idea that, you know, there's not an exact science to it. And it's not like there's any one right or wrong answer. It comes down to what you like, what you think will work, what feeling you wanna get out of it, and what look you want to get out of it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I will do my best to answer them. I am by no means an expert. I just have worked with color enough in my, in my life that I'm pretty comfortable with this. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, let me know. And I will, I'm probably gonna start on this today, but I think I will go ahead and put this up and then do a stitch with me on it tomorrow so you can start, you can get a feel for what the colors are looking like. I am not going to do a stitch with me on it right now because I've already been working on this for like two hours. <laughs> so it's time to get other things done. Love you guys, I will talk to you soon, bye-bye.